Audi has reshuffled its electric SUV range in Australia with the appointment of this. It's called the Audi SQ8 e-tron and it's basically the new flagship of the Q8 range in Australia. It takes a very different approach to performance with three electric motors and a mammoth 114 kilowatt hour battery. So question is, is it a fitting flagship and does it justify its almost $180,000 price tag? Let's find out. The SQ8 e-tron tops a reshuffled Q8 lineup in Australia, effectively assuming the place of the predecessor Q855 e-tron variant and adding more range via a larger battery, faster charging capability, tweaked underpinnings and fresh styling inside and out. The Audi SQ8 e-tron SUV is priced from $173,600 before on-road costs, while the swoopy Sportback variant commands a $7,000 premium. So it is a very complex drivetrain, but I'll try and explain it as best as I can. What you have here are three electric motors. There's one on the front axle and there's two on the rear axle, and they draw energy from a mammoth 114 kilowatt hour battery. That's very, very big, even in 2024 terms. The downside of such a big battery is obviously weight, and this car isn't particularly light, it's pushing almost 2.8 tonnes, but the upside, particularly with having two on the rear axle, is that you get some really cool technical innovations. So if we talk about the rear axle itself, you have electric torque vectoring. That's basically mimicking what a traditional uh, rear differential would do on a car. So it improves lateral stability, it improves ag agility, and outright safety as well out on the road. There are a lot of other cool things happening with this car. Audi says that they've improved the steering. They say they've improved the adaptive dampers against earlier versions of the SQ8 e-tron. So really interested to jump on the road and see what it's like. But one area undoubtedly where this car does lag behind a little bit is in terms of, of the battery's efficiency. An increase to 170 kilowatt DC charging capability from predecessor vehicles means the SQ8 can recharge to 80% in as little as 31 minutes, which is hardly challenging segment leaders. Likewise, its official WLTP range represents minimal on-paper improvement from equivalent e-tron models three or four years ago. Audi are really at the top of the game in terms of interiors at the moment, and the new SQ8 e-tron is another case in point. There's nothing all that different with this car against its predecessor, but it's still a wonderfully comfortable, pleasant, and Teutonic place to sit. The infotainment is all controlled via these two haptic displays. So one controls the infotainment at the top, the bottom controls all of your HVAC controls. And although I'm generally not a huge fan of touch screens for your HVAC controls, this one is really easy. You've got nice, easy access to basic commands, so you're not delving through touch screen sub menus to do that. Those two screens are paired with Audi's much vaunted virtual cockpit display, which is likewise really clear and concise. I'm a big fan of the driving position in this car. You're low slung, you're able to cultivate great feeling and feedback when you're driving. But above all else, it's just super comfortable and super well thought out too. Lots of storage, lots of great passenger amenity. I'm a huge fan of this interior. There's definitely no complaints from the rear seat either. There's plenty of room here for a couple of adults or likewise a couple of kiddie seats as well. It's a fairly open cabin space in the wagon variant. You've still got a nice open glass house in the second row. You've also got air vents behind the console and in the B pillar. I can't say the same for the Sportback. It does suffer a little bit from its rake profile when it comes to rear seat space, but it's comfortable back here. You've got nice premium materials that certainly go a long way in justifying this car's price tag. So there is clearly a lot going on with the Audi SQ8 e-tron SUV. The three motor setup, all of that power, it translates to a really brisk on-road experience. 0 to 104 and a half seconds using boost mode, 5.1 seconds if you're running in the regular mode. So I would say that it's, it's quick, but it's certainly not performance car quick. Not in the same way as a Tesla Model 3 Performance, which I've just driven. That's kind of breakneck and almost too intense with its reaction from a standstill. This is definitely quick and you know you're something in, in something a little bit sporty, but you could potentially be a little bit misled with the, the S component of the SQ8 badge because this kind of just feels more deliberate with the way it drives compared to a, a regular e-tron or Q8 e-tron. It doesn't feel overly exciting or emotive like a performance car. 
but I am appreciating, you know, the, the little bit more effort that has gone into the ride, the handling, the steering, the pedal modulation, everything else. It feels deliberate, it feels well thought out. Does it feel sporty? Not in any particular one way, but I am enjoying the drive experience for what it is. So where I think the SQ8 e-tron does miss out a little bit is with its battery tech. So I mean, I had a long-term e-tron SUV going back two years ago now, and I found for that car, I can't particularly place its exact WLTP verified range, but I was getting in the vicinity of about 340 kilometers to a full charge. That was a lot of different driving, but mostly it was country roads, it was very efficient settings, a lot of highway driving as well. You know, that 80, 90 kilometer an hour speed that EVs really tend to shine in. Today, we jumped in this car. Now, granted, it's got a thousand kilometers on it. It's only just been run in, so everything's pretty new, pretty fresh. We had 364 kilometres displayed range and so far today we've done about 350 kilometres and I've got 84 k's displayed range. So, I mean, in, in the space of two years there hasn't really been any big leap in progress in terms of EV range. You're still getting under 400 k's, but what you are getting is a really polished and really dynamically sound performance SUV. The SQ8 e-tron works wonders in all places. You've got Quattro all-wheel drive, and not once has it felt as though it was gonna do anything unintended. It just feels really safe, really sure-footed, and really secure on the road. And that's on you know, winding mountain passes, that's on open road passages, that's on freeway, that's on in town roads, everything else. So it's really good at harnessing all that power and putting it down to the ground from a safety point, but also from a dynamic point of view. It just feels really connected to the road underneath. In terms of steering and everything else, again, it imparts everything that you want, not too much of the stuff that you don't want. I wouldn't say that the steering is full of feeling and feedback, but you are getting a nice sense of what the car is doing. It's very easy to place it in the lane. The suspension really, I'll be honest, it doesn't really have any right to ride the way that it does on 22 inch wheels, but again, really good at providing a nice buffer between occupants in the car and the surface underneath. It does a really good job of taking the edge out of harsher bumps. You get a little bit of pitter patter stuff making its way through the cabin but the rides for me is one of the highlights because you're not making a huge compromise in terms of everyday comfort it still feels controlled over big washouts and in fast changes in direction it feels again really nicely tied down to the road underneath so i don't think i'd particularly label the audi sq8 e-tron a sporty suv but what it is is a really polished suv and we've seen that across a full day of driving today it's really impressive on different scenarios, it's comfortable inside the cabin, and the tech in these cars is just wonderful. I think the downside of the SQ8 e-tron is definitely its battery tech. It hasn't improved all that much in the space of three years compared to when the original e-tron landed a few years ago. Uh, so there's definitely some improvement to be made up there. That and the price tag, it's definitely not cheap, but it's still an impressive SUV nonetheless.